courses on the Coast Side, Western and English, all ages, all levels, on this episode of Pacific Occurrence. Mel, host for Pacifica Currents. Tonight we're talking to the owner operators of Wadi Ranch at Park Pacifica, April Snyder and Matt Farley. Welcome, April and Matt. Hi. Can you tell me a little bit about the ranch? Sure. Um, we have uh, been at Park Pacifica Stables for just over 10 years now, and Matt and I together operate our beautiful, over 110 acres of uh, scenic trails and uh, we have covered riding arenas where we offer year-round lessons, riding camps, summer camps. We also have uh, large spacious barns. All of our stalls are double stalls for the horses. The trails go up into the mountains uh, and adjoin the Golden Gate National Recreation Area which is uh, an amazing gem here in San Mateo County. Uh, and Matt does a lot of private training, one-on-one -on -one lessons, primarily with adults that are looking for a more advanced experience of horsemanship, not just uh, particularly Western or English, but in over uh, the years they have a new term for the same thing we've been doing, natural horsemanship, uh, which is just using the nature of a horse and his uh, natural instincts to help you train and better understand horses. And that's uh, where Matt comes in. So you have a full-service ranch. Can you give us some examples of the services you provide? Uh, yes, we have a number of, uh, of, of farriers that come into the ranch and they take care of the horse's needs, like their hoof care and anything else they need. I'm the sewer for Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus. And they will be here in San Francisco at the Cow Palace this year and they will be at the HP Pavilion and they will also be at the Open Dome as well. Yeah, my name is Steve. I'm uh, a horseshoer, farrier, blacksmith, um, and uh, I came up here to uh, Park Pacifica. Um, we came up to do some horses for some clients, um, removing shoes, the old shoes. Uh, usually we put them on a six to eight week schedule. Um, we'll take the foot and rebalance it up and reapply a new shoe and get them ready for the horse shows and keep them sound and keep them happy and keep the owners happy. kind of unique in the horseshoeing industry that um, I travel for Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus and um, every six weeks I go to two different cities. I fly in and I get all of the animals done. I do everything from um, alpacas to goats to uh, horses to um, even a Watusi cow. Um, the coolest thing I've ever done is I trimmed the porcupine for a couple years at the circus. Basically that's what we do here on the coast in Pacifica. That was an interesting video on the ferry. There's a lot of things I learned I didn't know. I, I would worry the horses would be jerking, but they just seemed to relax when they were getting their hoofs managed. It's because it feels like a giant pedicure for a horse. It's a treat. So is it just you two that run the ranch, or do you have other folks that help out? I will say that there is a team. There's a team of folks out at Park Pacifica. It takes a lot of hands to make everything run smoothly. Uh, there's so much to do. The farrier is a, a part of it, training, teaching, and lessons. And I believe we have video of some of the ladies, uh, teachers and trainers that you would meet. Uh, you might see in, in the big arena if you come out to visit us, Setsuko and uh, Caitlin. My two main priorities are safety and fun in that order. Most of my students seem to respond pretty well to that. I take care of and exercise most of the lesson horses here. 
Hi, my name is Caitlin Salvestrin. I'm a certified riding instructor here at Park Pacifica Stables. I teach English and Western here, and I was recently certified by the CHA. What I do here is I run a lesson program, and I've got a really good group of students, and I teach horsemanship and tacking up and riding and groundwork. I think that it's important to learn how to handle the horses on the ground as well as learning how to tack up because my goal is to not have people in lessons forever. I want people to be able to go out and competently and safely have fun. My main responsibilities involve teaching students and translating what I know into um, their passion and trying to cultivate a passion for them and teach them the skills and the know-how to not stay in lessons forever but to go out and achieve goals and become competent and safe riders and be able to have fun on their own. What I look for in a ranch when I'm working is the level of care and maintenance of the horses, how happy the horses are basically. And the horses here are very clearly well loved. So since I've been here in September I've learned a lot. I learn something every day here at Park Pacifica Stables and the horses are happy, the people are great, and um, it's just a great environment and I feel very happy to be here. I take riders of uh, any ability. I am Etsuko Sakimura II, resident hunter-jumper trainer at Park Pacifica Stables. With my program, um, it's really important to um, learn um, horsemanship from the ground up the grooming of the horse, basically the cleaning um, of the horse and tacking up, preparing them to be ridden, um, putting the horse away, learning proper uh, skills for um, taking care of the horse. And then once the student is in the saddle, I focus on quiet hands and a solid seat. Um, as quiet hands uh, are hands that don't bounce around when riding, you know, which enables the rider to communicate effectively with the horse uh, without creating um, any white noise or communication confusion. And the other reason it's important is so that the horse doesn't get hurt. When the rider's hands bounce around, it pulls uh, on the bit that's in the horse's mouth and can create a lot of discomfort. So once the rider has accomplished those two basics, that's when they're on the path to become what we call a good equitation rider, a rider that can communicate invisibly uh, yet effectively, keeping their horse willing and happy. So I'm a riding instructor, but I'm also a horse trainer. Uh, and the difference being um, with riding instruction, I provide the horse and specifically work with horse and rider in the saddle. Uh, with the training, I work with uh, the horse a lot more. Um, a lot of times um, owners bring their horses to me with specific issues that they're having, um, either behavioral or under saddle. Um, or they also have other, uh, goals in mind of things that they want to accomplish. Um, just personal goals such as being able to enjoy their horse safely and uh, comfortably um, to goals of actually going out and competing. So I work very closely with the owner to create a program um, that, um, the, that helps the owner understand the process of what I'm doing with their horse so that they can also learn to become problem solve independent from me as well uh, in the future. And many of my students go on to compete uh, at shows. Uh, right now we focus on local shows in the area. At shows they can be, uh, be judged um, on their equitation um, and the skills that they've learned in their lessons um, in different classes such as classes that just focus on the flat, walk, trot, canter, uh, or jumping classes. Matt, Itsuko talked about you horse training. Can you tell us some about that? Yes, um, I, I do a lot of uh, groundwork and in saddle training uh, with horses and riders. So anybody that needs help uh, around the ranch, uh, I'll, I'll throw in a hand. Okay, here we are with a, a couple of our um, yearling colts that were born on the ranch last year. Uh, we do um, 
a number of uh, we breed a number of mares on the ranch, and these are two of the uh, two of the colts that we um, that we fold out last year, and that we're just now starting them this year on some of the groundwork. So what I'm doing here is um, desensitizing uh, the colt to things around him, uh, ropes and bottles and bags and anything that would uh, potentially scare uh, this horse in the future. So I'm swinging the, 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 the uh, stick and string around him uh, to let him know that it's not there to hurt him. Uh, it's just a tool and extension of my hand. And here I'm just rubbing on him, telling him he's doing a good job. And uh, okay, right here I'm, I'm, I'm uh, actually yielding his forequarters. Um, I'm teaching him to move off of pressure. Uh, so wherever I'm putting the pressure, he is to uh, move away from it. And that's to also prepare him for uh, when we do get in the saddle, uh, that he understands what we're doing. And here I'm, uh, I'm lunging him. Again, uh, we work off of pressure, so I'm giving him some pressure to move forward and uh, also uh, controlling the nose of the horse so he understands when we, when we go ahead and put on the, the saddle and bridle, he, can, uh, he knows what we're, what we're talking about. Okay, I'm uh, lunging, uh, I believe, his brother here. Um, again, preparing him for uh, being ridden down the road. This is um, Amanda Caldwell. She helps me with, uh, with the Colts. When I'm starting them, she's uh, really light and she's a really good hand. Um, she, we've worked together since she was uh, six years old and uh, she's really good around the horses. So I trust her and the horses trust her. And she's basically laying over this Colts back. Uh, he's seeing something out of his right eye for the first time and uh, preparing him for the saddle also. <laughs> That was fun to see how horses start to get trained. Um, I did notice that was a pink pony, which I think is interesting. Um, but when do you start putting the saddle on a pony? Uh, we start our colts at uh, right around two years old. Uh, some horses um, uh, take a little bit longer, uh, but uh, most of the time it's right around two years old. Right. All right. And, and speaking of the pink horse, the, the sire to both of those colts, his nickname is Pink Boy. And the color that they are is actually called a red roan. And uh, the reason we went with that particular uh, sire was uh, the cutting horse industry is where Matt and I, that's kind of where our passion lies in, in working with cutting horses. This saddle in particular is a, um, we brought some saddles with us. And in particular, this is a Western riding saddle. But more specifically, it is a cutting saddle. And uh, the way you can tell is that uh, when you're working with cutting horses, and riding cutting horses, they move fairly quickly, and they stop very hard, and they move again. So this saddle is designed to keep you in the pocket. Right here on this saddle, you can see you would be sitting in deep. The cantle raised here is fairly high, and the swells and the pommel of the saddle are also, again, very high, with a very tall horn. And this is taller than something you would see on a recreational riding or trail saddle or pleasure saddle. Um, so it's something very different than what you would see on one of our school horses or lesson horses. It's decorated with the Lone Star, and it also has two cinches. And you might wonder why there are two cinches. And the reason is this would be one cinch that fastens first under the, the front side of the horse, kind of around his armpits, I guess, if you were looking at a horse like a human. And then the back cinch would fasten secondarily under the flank of the horse. And some people may think, well, wouldn't that be uncomfortable? Isn't that where you put a strap for a horse to be bucking? It is if you haven't worked with the horse. It is not if you're riding a roping horse, a cutting horse, a barrel horse, any horse that's designed to do performance work. This saddle needs to stay in place. And one of the things that happens when you stop hard on a horse and you use your hand to help you, this back of the saddle wants to raise up. So the back cinch is designed to help prevent that from happening. So this, basically, this is one type of Western saddle. You've brought another saddle in for us. What's this saddle? Well, this is a super pared down version of a Western saddle. This is an English saddle. And uh, more specifically, it's an all-purpose 
and that means this saddle could be used for dressage riding uh, and a little bit of jumping, hunter jumper. Um, before the show, we were talking a little bit about these terminologies. Cutting, dressage, what is it? Dressage is a term that can apply to any and all horses. Uh, it's usually used around English riders, but what it means, the word means training. And it's something we want uh, for all of our horses, whether they're English or Western. Um, so I have ridden a dressage and experienced some upper level horses, which were fantastic. You will look at the saddle and notice some things uh, are missing uh, in relationship to the Western saddle. There is specifically no horn. <laughs> and even, again, you notice there's very little cantle. There's very little keeping you in this saddle. So when you're riding uh, an English or a dressage horse or in this uh, discipline, um, you have to be very balanced, you have to be very correct, you want to really keep your weight in the middle of this horse, you know. And also, uh, the difference is on the rigging, there's only one cinch involved with any of the English uh, or dressage saddles. Um, and it's just a lot lighter, a lot easier to lift, which is why I think some people like them. <laughs> um, but it's specific to their sport, to hunter jumper or dressage riding. and. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need a horn for someone to push on because they're not going to be stopping hard or backing up and they don't need this rise in the cantle to keep them there as the horse moves forward into a barrel or after cattle. It's just a different sport. Um, so this generally is a, the type of saddle you would see with an English riding horse. So I noticed the stirrups are up high here and mm -hmm. they're lower on the western. Is that right. just how the ride? Uh, this is just for ride? storage. When the saddle's ready to be used, oh. you would draw the stirrups down and then they would lie there. Oh. And they would be adjusted um, according to the height and need uh, of the rider. Usually when we saddle up a horse, we like to brush him off really nicely first. He's already pretty clean. But the thing you're mostly worried about is getting anything underneath their saddle or right underneath their cinch. Because if it gets tightened up while you're on them, it's like having a burn underneath your saddle and they can get pretty angry. But he's pretty cleaned off. So I'm going to go ahead and grab his saddle and blanket. So this is your typical English saddle. The first part that we have to put on is the blanket. So we take this and try to lay it evenly over the horse's back and make sure we haven't gotten any lumps in it at all. So as we can see, the underside of the saddle has these two different sides here. And this middle passage allows for it to rest easily on either side of the spine without being uncomfortable. And it also allows for air circulation underneath. The same way with the pad, it has the middle space here and isn't too thick. You have to allow the horse to have a breathable action back there so that when he's being ridden, it doesn't get too sweaty and too hot. And you can also see they're very nice cushions on either side of the saddle to make sure that his back feels nice and comfy for the whole time. And just pop it right on top. What you want to make sure is that you have a lot of good space between the pommel and the horse's withers underneath. Otherwise, it gets pretty tight. This is called the cinch. The girth in English. And the girth in English, which goes underneath. And these are the billets on this side. And then come back around the other side of the horse. Make sure your cinch is even or your girth. And then we have more billets on this side and you have to make sure that it's evenly done on both. Then we go ahead and tighten it up a bit. So that's how it attaches on the inside. And you can either attach it to the first and second or the first and third, as long as you have it the same on both sides. What you want to do is put your hand down between the horse's ears and put the bit in your hands. Ask him to open his mouth. Pull the nose band over. There we go. Good boy. And then pull the head saw fully over the ears and make sure everything's adjusted right. This is a little bit loose. So sometimes you have to tighten it up until you find the right fit. That's a good boy. Now we have it tight, we can pull the forelock over, attach the throat latch. And with this, you want to have about three fingers width of space underneath his chin. And here's your typical English saddle. 
and this is Cody. And we start from the neck and work our way back and really focus on this area, which is the barrel, because this is where the saddle goes, and down under the girth, because that's where the cinch goes. And we don't want anything to be under the horse that's going to irritate them, because it's like wearing shoes or socks with something in them. And as I move around the horse, I'm always going to let him know where I am because it helps horses stay secure, especially when I'm moving behind them. They have blind spots behind them and directly in front of them. So, for example, in approaching a horse, you want to approach at the shoulder because it's a non-threatening area for them. Next thing I'm going to do is clean his feet. And the purpose of this is the same as grooming. Um, we want to make sure that there's nothing in there that's going to bother him. So I'm very gentle as I do this. Horses' feet are sensitive, especially the center area, which is called the frog. Now we're going to do what's called tacking up. Start with the saddle pad, which goes underneath the saddle. And before I put anything on a horse's back, I'm going to show it to them and let them know it's nothing scary. This is a western saddle. And again, I'm just going to show it to him real quick, let him get an eyeful of it very gently on his back. First thing is the front cinch. This is called the latigo, this piece of leather here. Or you can make a latigo knot. All right, now we're going to put on the bridle. And always very, very gently into their mouths because that piece of metal can be um, uncomfortable on their teeth. And that's tacked up horse. So do you always use a saddle to ride? We, we do usually use a saddle, not always. Sometimes we practice bareback riding. Uh, but we don't always use a bridle. And I think we have a really nice piece of film with uh, Clara O oh riding Smokey. And she's going to demonstrate uh, for the viewers something called bridleless reining. And uh, you're going to see her do some very uh, uh, wonderful patterns and maneuvers. It's a predetermined pattern that she's riding. And uh, she's going to be riding at high rates of speed using her legs. She does not have a bridle on this horse. And she's using her legs to tell it where to go and how fast, and her seat to tell it when to slow down or stop. And it's pretty amazing. I'm Clara, and this is Smokey, and we do bridleless reining. Well, that was Clara, and I just wanted, uh, I wanted folks to know that, you know, you, if you don't have a horse, if you've never ridden a horse, if you've never handled a horse, uh, don't let that stop you. If you have a curiosity, if you like um, animals and you enjoy nature, of course, we have a beautiful place. Clara started with us um, actually in summer camp when she was about seven years old. So um, it's amazing what you can learn. And the more you learn, the more you seem to want to learn. Uh, Matt's great with adults. Uh, he's also great with kids. We both teach uh, private one-on-one -on -one lessons. And uh, all you need to do is give us a call, and we'll arrange a tour, have you come out. We do summer camps. 
We do uh, occasionally private trail rides uh, for uh, guests, and uh, we'd love to, to meet people. Do you have to own a horse or rent a horse or lease a horse to come do lessons? Or um, how does that board, work? Train, uh, teach, you can lease. We do half leases. We do uh, lessons, it's done hourly. Um, we also uh, sell uh, blocks of, of lessons. Um, so yeah, we do it all. Well, it's a variety for whatever you want, mm -hmm. whatever you, someone might want. So do you have any upcoming events? We do have a three show series. It starts uh, August 7th, will be the first of the series and the other dates are posted on our website. Um, we usually have something going on. Uh, the summer camps. Summer camps are ongoing, you're right, okay. and we have lessons going year round. Uh, with the riding arena, it's possible to do that. And um, There's usually some other activities. I believe we have a, a discovery site ride coming up. Chamber of Commerce is coming out to host a Gaspar de Portola discovery ride to the monument, which is up in the uh, Golden Gate National Recreation Area. And they're going to dress in original costumes of the Spaniards and mount horses and ride to the monument. So that'll be fun. That will be fun. <laughs> that will be great. Yeah. So you said you do it all year round. So it's a covered arena. It's covered. Yes. Is that it's right? A, uh, it's, a, it's 130 feet wide uh, by 250 feet long. Uh, so it's actually bigger than the Cow Palace Arena at the Grand National Rodeo. It's, it's huge. So uh, plenty of room for everybody to ride in. That's great. So all year round. All, all year, year round. round. And lastly, there is a great event uh, being held down the coast at the end of July, uh, July 29th and 30th, or 30th and 31st, the Driscoll Ranch Rodeo. Good rodeo. And we do have six riders, juniors and adults, that will be participating. It's a lot of fun for the family. Our girls are going to be riding in the barrel race. And so you'll see a lot of our uh, horses and kids. We're going to haul them down and, and cheer for them and have a good barbecue meal and see some bull riding. It's a great day. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. That's great. Well, it's really nice having you both here. I really appreciate you coming in and Thanks showing us all the wonderful uh, saddles <laughs> and the videos. And it's been great talking with you. Thank it's been you. fun to be here. This was a wonderful show. I'd like to thank the guests for coming in and thank you for watching. You can find us on YouTube, Pacifica Currents Channel. Good night.